We are back and better than ever. I don't know what happened the last time, but all kinds of things on my end were blinking and buzzing and doing all kinds of things. But they're not doing that now. Good morning, good morning, my brothers and my sisters. Welcome to Turning on the Lights from the Churchtown Church of God. I am the pastor, Brian David Warner. I've been here for 12 years, going on 13 in February, 13 years. It's been a long stretch. It's been a wild stretch. There is no doubt about that. Oh my goodness, I cannot get my act together this morning. And all that we did before, I guess, was wasted because there was nobody here. The thing was not broadcasting. So Rick, I've been uh, broadcasting for 10 minutes now and realizing that it wasn't working finally. That's how dense I am. No jokes, please. We were, I was rambling on about Randy Simpson tonight at 7 in the, con, in the uh, concert hall. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. I was rambling on about Randy Simpson tonight in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. Oh, there's always something going on around here. Always something going on around here. Good morning, Mary. If it's not Randy Simpson, then it's some church event, it's a ministry, it's men's, it's women's, it's all kinds of things, Bible studies, right and left, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, if you're just joining us, I've been talking for 10 minutes into nothing before I realized that the that Facebook wasn't working. Because I wanted to show you this, I wanted to show you this cool jacket, or this cool vest, watch. Look at this. Huh? Very nice. Very nice. Huh? What do you think about that? Plus, I got a new patch for it in Hawaii. I am very excited about that. The vest came from a congregational member, Miss Mary Hoon. It was her husband's. What an honor to be gifted such a thing. And we tried to make it such. There's the church town rider patch right there and uh, all kinds of things to honor my father-in-law and Mary and church town and God. And so hopefully uh, it's actually, it's just, oh, it's one of those things, you know, you feel like a little kid, like I'm never taking this off. I'm going to sleep in it. It's what I feel like it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to turning on the lights. Like I said, I was rambling on for almost 10 minutes before I realized that it wasn't working. And I'm not sure the light there, I don't know what's going on, but here we are. <clears throat> wanted to talk about a couple of things this morning. The first thing I wanted to talk about were was devotions. I am asked all the time, do you know a good devotion? Or do you know a good devotional? And I don't. I don't do daily devotions from a devotional. What? No, I'm... <laughs> I read, you know, I, and I'm just not like, I, I don't do that structure. I go inside scripture and I have a piece of scripture that I read and I meditate upon. And many times that is what comes forward on turning on the lights. Many times that is what comes forward on the Churchtown Weekly. If you look at the Churchtown Weekly, it was the same piece of scripture that we examined Tuesday on turning on the lights. And so I'll, I will dwell within a piece of scripture for a while. And I like to do that outside of my sermon preparation because it gives me another area for my brain to explore, uh, for my spirit to explore, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, that, that's the way I look at it. I'm not being smug about it. There are good devotionals out there. I just wanted to talk about a couple of good ground rules regarding them. Ground rule number one, as Mama D just indicated, they should be based in Scripture. There should be a lot of Scripture. Now, saying that, you can have small devotions like the Daily Bread. I like that. I have that on my phone. When, every once in a while, I'll pop it up and the Daily Bread for the day will come up. And usually, it's an anecdote, a story related to 
you know, like they'll tell the story and then they'll say, and God says the same thing in this piece of scripture. Then they'll give you a small piece of scripture, but a reference to a larger piece. And so you can really delve into that if you want to. I don't like when they are the thoughts of human beings. Even if they are the thoughts of human beings injected into scripture. And, and you have to be able to discern that when, when I, when, if I'm doing a devotion and I say, and, and the pronouns that I'm using are I, like first person pronouns, or I am interjecting myself as God into a scripture and saying, here is what I told you. Here is what I expect of you. That sort of thing. I always seek for my own edification and education, expository teaching. What does that mean? It means that you take a passage of scripture and you expose, expository, what it means. I like that. I get a little creeped out when an individual is trying to pretend to be Jesus or trying to pretend to be God and putting words in his mouth and doing things like that. Or... When it is the world according to Brian, like uh, I'll say something about the world condition today and wars and rumors of wars and everything being upside down and backwards. And then I'll say, you know, God says. Or, you know, it, it may be even something less relevant, but I'll try to find a scripture. Here is Brian's idea. And then I will try to find a scripture to back it up. Those two things, I think, are red flags. But when we find a scripture that when we find a devotion that takes scripture and exposes its meaning. Now, if you go scripture, expository and then application, that is the proper order. Oftentimes we talk about the lens of Brian and here's the application. And now let me go to the Bible and find a scripture that backs that up. That's the wrong order. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but Bible, 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 Bible. If you want a devotion, have a devotion that is derived from Scripture, talks about Scripture, and then applies it to the human experience. That order. Not derived from man, thoughts of man, and seeking scripture to back it up. That's the wrong order. And I've talked about this with regard to preaching. I am almost an exclusively expository preacher. Although I will take themes like we we're talking, we've been talking about God's Holy Spirit for a while now here at Church Town. That has been the theme, although we've taken several rabbit trails and this and that. So, I, but I, what I'm going to do with that theme is what? Find passages in scripture. If I'm talking about how God's Holy Spirit was, how he utilized himself in the Old Testament, I'm going to find passages about that, read and examine those passages and do a bunch of expository preaching about that. So it's not thematic in that, you know, <clears throat> here's what I have discerned from my reading about love, marriage, sex, and stress. You know, that sort of thing. So I hope that that makes sense. Maybe this is topical, not thematic. Maybe what I'm talking about more here at Churchtown is topical. The topic is God's Holy Spirit and how he utilized himself in the Old Testament regarding the prophets. Boom, there we go. And now we will talk about, yeah, that's probably much better. So, kind of an open conversation today. I don't know if you're into a devotional. I know some of you are. I see some of you, you're, you put your postings online. But I want to caution you about having that devotion come from a human being and then backed up by scripture as opposed to scripture, 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 and a very discerning human being who brings out the topic or the theme and the 
application to the human experience. Always be looking for that. The other thing I want to talk to you about is discernment and wisdom. When we look at what is happening in the world today, I go back to my assertion over the years that in education, in the world at large, in terms of our expectations, and in the church, over the past few generations, we have been lowering the bar so much and paying so little attention to the actual outcomes that we seek, whatever they may be. If it is a high school education, what are the outcomes? Are the outcomes that you will know what are, are the you know, 27, 47, 157 different genders and pronouns that there are? Or is the outcome that you seek the understanding of human history and the battlefield of ideas that has been going on since human beings have been in discourse with one another? That is really an understanding of the development and the movement of human history. Do you want to understand some of the socioeconomic issues of today and how we've gotten to this point? You have to understand the past. If you want to understand the battles and the wars that are raging today and the ideological war that is raging today, we must understand the past. If we understand, if we want to understand how um, the version of American capitalism compares to the version of uh, Chinese socialism slash communism, then we need to understand the past. We need to understand the ideas and where they came from and to what end People seek to use those ideas. Well, obviously, when we look around, we see individuals and some of them very well-meaning who this is how much they know of human history. They, what they know of human history is what has been presented to them on social media. And there is no context in which they can set these ideas or propaganda that has been hoisted upon them through social media because they don't know anything beyond the date of their own birth, if that. They know what is being presented to them today. They are, they, they, they <clears throat> because all human beings seek to belong and seek to have a purpose and we know as Christians, we know what that's all about. We know that the foundation and the cornerstone is Jesus Christ. Knowing who we are as a son or a daughter of the Most High, we know that. But lost human, human beings are wired to know who they are, have that purpose. And so what is presented by Satan himself and these lies and these false ideas and this propaganda is just that. It is identity. It is purpose. And it comes with a way to dress, a language to speak, behaviors to participate in. And a human being who is lost, who is not of God, who does not know who they are, firmly entrenched in the spirit of the Lord, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, all of that, will cling on to something that resonates with them or resonates with a group of people, their group of peers or friends, so that they can belong. Well, I should be outraged, oppressor, oppressed. Well, which side am I going to take? Obviously, the West is the oppressor and all the rest of the world 
maybe minus giant communist China, is the oppressed. Well, what side do you think? I will choose the side of the oppressor, please. And so you have these impressionable, ignorant, young people who don't know any history beyond the date of their own birth, who are fed these ideas, these identities, this propaganda, and there they are. They see all of their friends becoming and choosing these identities and this ideological stance. I will stand with the oppressed. And they have no clue regarding the human history that has led to this moment in time. How much grace do we allow? Well, we allow all the grace that is necessary. All the grace that we allow right up until the, those ideas and the way that lost individuals are participating in those ideas threaten the safety and security of my family and myself. We allow for that grace. We read in Scripture that the battle, the ideological battle, shall we call this spiritual warfare, the spiritual warfare, which will manifest itself in the physical warfare, which we see throughout the world and have for the past thousands of years. <clears throat> we see that we know that that is going to happen and going to get worse before it gets better. Progressive ideology says, no, no, no. Human beings are much better than that. We can all get along. We can do this. You have the power within you to be good. You have the power within you to not be greedy. You have the power within you to not seek power and the destruction of others. No, you don't. Christianity, the teachings of Jesus himself, teach us that we all have fallen short of the glory of God. We cannot be gods in and of ourselves. We must be filled with the spirit of God in order to have any idea of the good that is possible, the sacrificial living that is possible, the sacrificial giving that is possible, the sacrificial love that is actually possible by Brian. No, by God living in me. You see how those two things are just, they're going to be diametrically opposed and they will not resolve themselves one side or the other, you know, if you are indwelled by God's Holy Spirit and you are living the life of a sacrificial lover of humanity, if you will, you're not going to all of a sudden say, you know what? I think you are right. We should lie, cheat and steal and or you know, do whatever, whatever we should. I don't know because I'm not there. There's going to be fighting and I don't like it and I don't want it, but they're fighting now. They have been fighting for 1500 years as the, as I've mentioned on Tuesday, this, the sons of Ishmael have manifested themselves in the form of Islam. And we see that diametrically opposed and it's happening and it's going to happen. And this, these are the two very large camps, three very large camps. One, one is the ideology of government, the ideology of the state, worship of the state. And the state has the godlike powers. The state will provide the identity. The state will provide. Now we see that through the atheistic religions it's a real thing, Marxism, communism. The second thing that we see is the brutal works-based religion of Islam throughout the world. And again, each one of these has billions of adherents. 
and, and we understand that Islam tries to incorporate some aspects of Christianity, if you will, regarding the Old Testament and even regarding Jesus as a revered prophet, trying to lure and suck individuals into a false understanding of who God is, how God is. And it is a very much works based that which is actually very attractive, especially to men, because I can do this. I get into this religion and I do these things every day and I have these life goals that are built into the religion and all of these different things. And then we have Christ Judeo Christianity. Now, we can have that caveat of the Jews. And that's what I spoke about a little bit on side. Paul even has a difficult time describing how the covenant made with the Hebrew people will continue to play itself out, even though Christ has come, Christ has died, Christ has risen again. We know that God made a covenant with his people and that he will not break that covenant. The people will break it, but he will not break that covenant. And like I said, even in Romans and Paul says, he doesn't quite know how that's going to play out. But he does know that God won't break that covenant. <clears throat> but we see those who follow Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Savior of all humankind. So we click on the news and we see these ideologies, this battlefield of ideologies playing out in real time with manifestations of real physicality throughout the course of the throughout the world <clears throat> we and most of the folks that i hang out with or know have context to all of this we have looked at history we understand the creation of the, these ideas these ideologies and we what we understand how they grew and began to play out through the course of human history. And now we're watching the world and it seems that here we go. But it's important to understand as we watch ignorance. And this is so frustrating. When you see so many young people in their teens, in their 20s, and even into their 30s, and how we have failed culturally to educate people. And this, I'm not, you know me, I, I will evangelize on the side of Christ 24-7, 365. But I'm not even talking about that right now. I'm talking about even making an educated decision as to which ideology you will fall under. We're so undereducated and uneducated that whatever comes across a young person's phone for that day, whatever propaganda, oppressor, oppressed, Christian, atheist, Christian, whatever, we say, in our desire to have identity, in our desire to have purpose, in our desire to feel as though we belong, we will choose, usually based on mob mentality, instead of an educated understanding. My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge from God. For the Lord grants wisdom, 
From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. <clears throat> he is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. And you will find the right way to go, for wisdom will enter your heart, and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. <clears throat> Who teaches that to their children these days? Who has read that to their children lately? Christian and non-Christian alike, I challenge you. Do we teach our children that the beginning of true wisdom is seeking the Lord? And through him, and the gift of wisdom, as he bestows it upon his sons and daughters, we will have our eyes opened. And we will be able to see and feel and know right from wrong. That we will seek through God to understand the events of the world in their historical context and how the Lord is guiding through his strong right arm the movements of history so that our children do not grow up to be ignorant. They do not grow up to be afraid and they do not grow up to be weak, weak of mind, Weak of will, weak of spirit. How many people teach that to their children, teach that to their grandchildren, and teach them to seek understanding and knowledge? by first turning to the Lord and asking. Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, your wisdom, your will will be done, will be given and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that every one of your followers will right now turn to you and understand that we seek you first. Seek you first. Put you first. Have you first. That we sacrificially give our lives to you. That your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray. We pray for those who are closest to us. We pray for the state in which we live. We pray for the nation in which we live. We pray for the lost who we see every day screaming, fighting, crying, killing. We pray that your sovereignty will be manifest on this earth, that all human beings will know the mighty power of Yahweh, God. We do know that there will come a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will profess <clears throat> that Jesus Christ is Lord. Grant us the wisdom to continue on during these turbulent times as your sons and daughters. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Randy Simpson is in concert tonight. There's a Bible study Saturday night. 
Sunday morning at 10, I'm very excited. We've got fantastic music from the new song singers and a special piece. And I am back and better than ever. No vacation, no flu. We're ready to rock Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So let's gather up the friends and family and get to church. This is another thing. Let me end with this. <clears throat> and let me make mention to everybody that there is Wednesday evening Thanksgiving Eve service here where we share the Lord's Supper. And of course, all are welcome. The table is open to all who will reverently receive. <clears throat> but I have noticed that as the world has been going to hell in a handbasket on a roller coaster, more and more people have been distracted from church. Distracted from church. We, we, we're going here, we're going there, we're doing this, we're doing that. It's almost as if going to church and being in community with fellow believers would make everything that's going on in the world more real and scarier. Because when you're in church, you see the truth, you know the truth, you're reading the truth, you're praying, you're in unity, you feel the power of the Lord, and you know. Don't be distracted. Don't let the events of the world and the clash of these ideologies and the seemingly lost, like hopelessness that is out there, turn you away from the cross. Unify. Unify as a body. There are 168 hours in a week. You can't take an hour and a half to unify with the body and belong. Come on, man. God bless you. Good Lord willing and the river don't rise. We will see you Sunday morning in church. We're going to bring it.